All right, so we're going to go ahead and look at PLC Next Engineer. This is the programming software for the PLC Next hardware platform. Um, so we're going to go to the Phoenix website. I'm going to put in the 104.6008. That's going to bring you here. We're going to go to downloads. Uh, we're going to go to software. And then at this time, there is a 2024.0.3 LTS. That's the one you want. Um, this will always be updated with the most current and the best version to use. Um, so if there was a version that had some bugs and they wanted to remove it, when you come back here, um, you'll find you know 2024.0.4 LTS. And that's going to be a hot fix for anything they found in number three. If you do need older versions, there is older versions under the software archive. So you can go all the way back to 2019, 2020, um, and some of the really, really old versions if you did need to. Um, all right, so I've already got it downloaded. Um, I've already got it open. Um, so this is the start screen. Um, you have a couple of options for uh, starting PLCs. Um, none of them are what we need because we actually need a 2152 with 2023.0. Um, the trailing zero doesn't necessarily matter. This is the LTS version, and then this would be 2023.6, which would not be an LTS version. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to create a new project. And then from there, it's pretty much a blank slate. So if I blow everything out, there's nothing here. Um, so the only thing I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to change this to the four subnet just because I know that's where we just moved my PLC. And then I am going to put in a default gateway uh, just because I know what it is and I would like my PLC uh, to reach out to the internet at some point. Um, so once we've done that and changed the network settings, we're actually going to go to online controllers. We're going to select X3, which is the NIC that the PLC is currently plugged into. Then we're going to hit the radar dish, and that's going to scan the network. Now we are going to find a couple of PLCs, um, just because this is my demo wall, and I have more than one PLC uh, available to me. So if you'll notice, we found two. We have one that's on 4.20, which is the one we want, and we have one on 4.10. Um, what's kind of nice is it will show you the revisions, what firmware, what your Mac address is. Um, so if we go ahead and we right click on this and we hit add to project, we're going to be able to add, it's going to pull all the information from um, the PLC and then put it into the um, software for me so I don't have to do it myself. Um, so once I've done that, uh, it's going to ask me to log in before it pulls all the information because it wants to go online with the controller. So we're going to put admin as the user. And then I did change the password to password. Uh, if you get rid of Ember credentials, you only have to do it once. Um, now it's asking me if I would like to add the IO to my project. I don't see why not. Uh, it is attached. So let's go ahead and add it. Um, and then you'll see that it did put it in over here. So we are online with the PLC. We do have the right PLC controller. So that's sort of a very convenient way to make sure that you have the right firmware, the right controller, and all of the right information brought into the software um, ahead of time. There is a way to do it manually. So on the right hand side, if you go to network um, and you go to Axio Control, and you go to devices, Phoenix contact. So Axio control is going to be all of the PLCs. So you'll notice there's 1152s with various firmwares. There's 2152s with various firmwares. This is the one we would want, 2023.0. And then there's the 3152s even with some firmwares. Um, we also have a safety PLC that can attach to either the 2152 or the 3152. Um, if you needed those, you would add those here. Um, if you want to add IO cards, you are going to go to 
AXLF would be that first card that we put in. Um, and we know it's a digital input and output. And then I know, because I use it, that it's a DIA D08. Um, so we would just go ahead and drag that over here to the bus if it didn't exist, and it would add that to the bus structure. Um, for smart elements, you're going to get out of the AXLF and go to AXLSE. Um, I don't have any modules currently in there except a slot cover. So that would be under system. And then there's an SC, which is an SC non-active. So that's basically a blank slot with no card in it. Um, and SC-A was sort of the original card uh, and any blank slots needed an SC-A. Um, that's been removed. Um, and now there can be just blank slots. Um, so once we've you know added all of our I.O., We've added our controller to the project. We make sure we can communicate with it. Um, it's now time to really start doing um, some programming and building some tasks. So we're gonna jump into that next.